Now let's talk with Tom Long. Tom, thank you for being with us as always. It's wonderful to be here. I gotta say, you hit me in the heart because I have two nine-month-old daughters and oh, a three-month-old yeah. son, right? And this idea of how we talk to our children is so powerful. Uh, to relay that story was just, it, it made me think deeply about um, many, many things. So, so thanks for sharing that with us. You know. It's a pleasure. It, um, that experience makes me go over all of the things that I said to my children <laughs> all <laughs> the years. Right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Though, though I found myself going back to remembering being a child and the things that I got teased for. I mean, does everybody get bullied with words as a child? Does anybody get away without that? I, I think we do. But you brought yeah. up the bigger yeah. idea, though, today in society, and I, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this, this civic or civil discourse, you know? We're in a fascinating time where we have technology that can use and sling words back and forth at a rapid pace and a rapid fire like never before, right? So what, what's your take on what's going on out there yeah. in general, I guess, you know? Yeah. Well, I do think we learn as children uh, about the power of words, and we especially learn the power of words to hurt. We learn it on right. the playground, right. we learn it in the sandbox. Right. But as we mature, um, we're supposed to be able to uh, learn how to use speech in ways that build relationships and build a better community. And there's a kind of an infantile regression going on in our political That's life good now. Way to put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, where uh, we go back to the sandbox, we go back to the playground, and we try to destroy uh, each other in a kind of zero sum game of political uh, combat. And uh, we're in real trouble in this. We can learn how to talk to each other in a better way. Uh, it's almost like we've become, yeah, like school children where everybody tolerates that and thinks it's, it's normal. And you need that one kid who stands up and says, this is not, this is not fair. You can't talk to them like that. That's right. Yeah. And um, that one kid uh, is the one who speaks a word that is stunningly different from the others and galvanizes a uh, community of positive relationships. So we need somebody in public life who learns how to speak that way. Yeah. You know, Tom Lilly and I were talking before about the importance of the message in the mainline tradition, especially, right. you know, and how often right. people come to church to hear that message. That's it's right. a different experience for me sometimes as a Catholic because it's about the Eucharist for me, you know, and if I hear a good homily, fantastic. I'll tell those priests <laughs> right on way out the door. Good job, my friend. Yeah. But um, how does that relate to, to community and to building community, okay? You're working with young people that are gonna go out and That's take right. jobs, right? I, I was saying, you know, <clears throat> to me, church, the experience of church is one of the few things that are left that we have to come together as human beings and be in community. And listen so, to one and another. And listen to one another. So, I'd, right. you know, I'd love to hear. Well, one of, yeah. the th one of the things I think is important, especially in the Protestant tradition where the sermon has been so yeah, uh, magnified yeah, and, yeah. and central, is uh, for our pastors to recognize that yes, the sermon is important, but it is to be speech like we want people to speak in the rest of their uh, lives. That there's not this firewall between the way we talk in preaching and the way people talk at the office or the school. Right. So we're training uh, young preachers now to preach with everyday uh, language and then um, metaphors that make sense for people to be able to replicate as they talk to their children. I know what you're going to ask. Where's the depth there, though, right? So it's not all about relevancy, right? It's like what real faith works can, can people do in the, from the pulpit to make people feel nourished coming out of that experience, right? Yeah. I, I think the, the pulpit is, in the way that I'm talking now, a kind of dress rehearsal for theological discernment in the rest of life. The shallowness comes when you go to the shopping center on a Thursday afternoon and you see nothing of the glory of God. You see it simply well, as a mundane experience. But to be able to talk about ordinary events in life with theological language and discernment allows people to dress rehearse that for the rest of their lives. Well, one of the things I think you do so well is that you do use images that we can all relate to, but it goes, it goes deep. And one of the, the things I worry about in our culture right now is the way technology plays into this abuse of words and things will write people will write responses to things on the internet or send emails to the minister or to the local politician and do so anonymously and talk in ways they would never speak point. in real Those life. Darts, yeah. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah. Both anonymous and um, ill considered. Mm -hmm. um, the internet allows us to respond to each other without thinking about it. You have to get a piece of paper out and put it in the typewriter. You have to think about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And maybe it would be it good also, to Also though we yeah. don't get to see the other person's reaction. When True. you say something cruel to someone, you see 
the reaction on their face and it kind of catches you. On the internet, you're just typing away. And it, you imagine that it's not a real person who's receiving your language. Yeah. And it is a real person who's receiving your language. Yeah, that, that Bonhoeffer example you used was really interesting to be present. That's not an easy thing to do. No, that's an, almost an impossible yeah, thing right, to do, but, but to try to do it. Yeah, transform I mean, the that community. That Absolutely. Really yeah. Yeah. And uh, some of my, I was telling some of my students about that, and they've begun now, um, when they can't have the other person present, at least imagining that they are, yeah. so that they're hearing what they're having sure. to say in sure. private conversations. Yeah. Oh, that's a great discipline. Kathleen Norris talks about, though, holy gossip where she talks about the ways in which sometimes when we do talk about people, there's a sacramental quality to it. It really is genuinely saying, let's pray for them or let's that's help right. them with that's their right. struggle. And that's why the Bonhoeffer rule, you really wouldn't want it kept rigidly. Uh, there, are, there are plenty of exceptions. But the principle is good to keep in mind there's a human being who's the receiver of the language mm -hmm. that, we, that we speak. Tom, we know you're always working on a new book, and I think you've got an interesting one we'd like to hear about. And we don't have a lot of time left. I know Lillian was interested in this, so no, tell us. I've been tell reading us, it. Yeah, the book on what, the problem what's going of evil. On. Yeah. Yeah, I've gotten very interested in how pastors need to talk from the pulpit about um, how can we reconcile the notion of a loving and powerful God with the notion of innocent suffering. Okay. Many pastors get silent on that issue and say, well, I have a ministry of presence. Okay, say and, that again. I, mean, I just want to be clear. Uh, some pastors get silent about that and say, I've got a ministry of presence, but I want them to draw on the theological resources that are there for speaking about how can we think about a loving and powerful God, but there is still innocent, innocent suffering in the world. It's a difficult, deep, um, and in some ways intractable problem, but it's not one about which we have nothing to say. Mm -hmm. And I want pastors to begin to bring to speech um, what can be said. Mm -hmm.